chapter one of All Quiet on the Western Front, the narrator, young German Paul Boimer, describes his current life on the front lines of World War I. His platoon is resting five miles behind the front, and they've eaten well for the first time in a long while. They've received a substantial ration of cigars, cigarettes, and chewing tobacco, owing to the fact that half of the men in the platoon were killed in combat the previous day. These extra rations were meant for the now dead soldiers. Most of the men have received letters from home and are resting in a meadow, where they can still hear bombs from the front lines in the distance. As they enjoy their extra rations, Paul Boimer and his friends are uneasy in their awareness that they could very well have been the ones who died. The narrator then introduces his various comrades. Krop, the clearest thinker among us. Muller, who still studies for school exams. Chaden, a skinny locksmith with a huge appetite. And Kaczynski, or Kat, the leader of their group who's much older than the rest of them. Paul notes that he and most of his comrades are 19 years old and that the men's behavior here is very different from their behavior at home. Here, they go to the bathroom shamelessly in front of each other and they don't hesitate to use vulgar language. Krop has received a letter from their old school teacher, Kantarek, who had encouraged Paul and his friends to volunteer for the war for the sake of patriotic duty. Paul notes that not to have volunteered would have meant that he and his friends would have been ostracized by their families and community, and that there were thousands of Kantareks, all of whom were convinced that they were acting for the best in a way that cost them nothing. He now feels bitter that he trusted adults like Kantarek who were supposed to mentor and guide them. Instead, they failed them by idealizing war. Paul and his friends visit a wounded comrade, Franz Kemmerich, in the infirmary. Kemmerich has just had his leg amputated. Someone stole his watch while he was unconscious, but Paul feels that the theft doesn't matter because he thinks Kemmerich will likely die in the infirmary anyway. Muller eyes Kemmerich's boots, realizing that they'll be useful for one of them to keep. Rather than present the novel as the story of a glorious war hero, chapter one is quick to paint a picture of how the brutal realities of modern war affect soldiers. Many previous novels about war tend to emphasize the nobility and honor of being a soldier, leaving out the bloodier, tragic aspects of warfare and the psychological damage that results. Also, Paul saw authority figures such as Kantarek as mentors with wisdom to be respected. But after witnessing the death of his friends in battle, he realizes Kantarek and his generation know nothing about the realities of war and are able to hide behind books and lectures while instructing younger people on the concept of honor and duty. 